McKenzie, they went on the, the run before the half and then after the half, too. What did you see that they were doing well during that stretch? Um, I think it was more so our defense wasn't doing what we were supposed to. They were coming off the screens hard, and the second half we tried to make the adjustment of switching, and I don't think we did it like we usually do. So I think they just executed their offense well, and they got the people who were open the ball. Do you expect them to be driving into the, the lane that much? Yeah, we our focus was to stop their three, and to do that we knew that they'd have to take it to the hole, and that's what we wanted. But they were finishing their layups well, so then that ended up hurting us. So then we tried. I mean, they were doing good on their three and their layups, so it's hard to stop both of them. Second chance points seemed like they played a big role, too. You talk about the way they were able to crash the boards on the offensive end and kind of be either, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I just think effort definitely is a big factor. Like. You, can con you can't control everything in the game, but you can ch control your attitude and your effort. And I just felt like we weren't giving in our all on all the, off or all the defensive boards, and they were just getting lots of putbacks. So if you have the, mo the motion offense that they run, what makes that hard to defend? I just, they all just come off the cuts really hard. And um, if we aren't communicating correctly, then we're just going to get blown by. And I just felt like we weren't on top of our game with communication today. Talk about the difference Rebecca Hatcher made at number 30. Seems like she kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, but she had a big game today. What, what did she do out there? Um, she drove hard, like we were saying. She was definitely one of their drivers, and we knew that she was a driver, and we didn't play her, I don't think, as well as we should, making her go left. But she was aggressive, and her being aggressive made us have to, we had to focus on her as she was driving, and then she was getting good passes out to her shooters. So I think her just being aggressive really set the tone for the game. She also had some big threes at big moments. Mm -hmm. Sophia, what did you think of your first rivalry game experience? Uh, it was a little disappointing, frustrating. Uh, when you come out, you're expecting to win. We're expecting to win every game we come to play. And so when we just don't come out and execute what we were coming to do, it just gets frustrating and I'm uh, looking forward to the next game. Yeah, where do you go from here? I mean, I think you guys go on the road, right, next week? Yeah, so we go to NAU and then Southern Utah. Okay. Logistically, I guess that's kind of a tough trip, so mm -hmm. just talk about how you have to bounce back. Yeah, we what just, I mean, we had a really tough game with NAU. We came down uh, back from 21, so, I mean, they're going to want revenge on that, and it is a tough road trip. It's a long one. It's a long bus ride after the flights. So, I mean, we just have to get back and focus on the things we need to work on and get better. Thank you. Thank you. Jen, you want to make some opening, have some opening thoughts on the game, and then we'll open up questions. Well, I thought the tale of the game today was rebounding. Uh, you know, they came out and basically to get 17 offensive boards and that many second shots uh, certainly set the tone for the game. I felt uh, that I really felt going into it that was an area where we should have been strong and. It felt like we got out hustled on that in that aspect of the game for sure. It looked like a lot of you know close shots that you guys were able to get weren't falling. For yeah, you. we had that stretch where you know we got down about eight and then we got a lot of good looks and just none of them went and you know some rebound putbacks and they didn't go down and you know it's unfortunate at a time like that you hope you can hang in the game if you're getting stops on the other end, but we weren't getting stops. They were you know. Getting to the hole on is pretty good, and, and they're hard to guard. You know, there's a good team here at home, and um, you know that's the challenge of guarding them. They can shoot the three, and they put it down well. So you're in that fine line of how close do you get to them? And um, you know, credit to them, they played well and, and did some good things. What was kind of the strategy on defense? What did you want them to do? Or well, obviously, I mean, you got a team that's shooting that good from three. That's a factor. That was a topic of discussion. Um, and then uh, we should have done a better job trying to close them out. Uh, you know, I, I thought they got to the hole a little bit too clean on us on some things, and um, that was, you know, a, a big, big problem for us as the day went on. Did you feel like you controlled the gate, the pace of the game a bit, though? 
um, in terms of maybe slowing down most of their fast break opportunities? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, they didn't get a lot of transition on us. Uh, that was one thing that we always try to take some pride in, in not giving up transition. Um, but uh, it, it was just the getting to the hole in the half court. You know, we, we didn't keep them in front of us well enough, and that's got to be a, a big point of emphasis. You mentioned with rebounding, you said uh, they just out hustled. You. Was there any other uh, factor that went into the rebounding disparity? Or no, I, I don't think so. I mean, a lot of rebounding just comes down to heart and who's going to go get it and who's going to run after it and come up with it. And, uh, you know, there were some 50 50 balls we went after, and, and I'm proud of my team. I mean, I think they played hard. It was just things didn't kind of go our way today, and, and we had a hard time. We didn't really have anybody come out with a hot hand. and tried some different lineups, trying to find somebody who, who could get a hot hand and uh, you know for a long time there it was it was a struggle trying to get someone in to drop a basket. You guys have been so good rebounding the ball in conference play so <coughs> did you notice anything that changed specifically? Well they, they spread you out a lot and then if they miss it they go get it and uh, you know that's one of those things where when you're in help recover a lot um, you know, you don't necessarily have your true block out responsibilities when you're off, often towards helping or something like that. But deep down, you just got to, you know, figure it out and, and go, go get them and get a block out and get a body on somebody and, and find a way to go get it. It's a lot of effort, a lot of hard work. All three of the Montana State seniors in double figures, so did you feel like ex their experience played a factor in this game? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, that's an experienced ball club right there. They're, they got guards on there that have been a part of, you know, what they've done here, and, and they're playing at home, and it's, you know, they've been in this situation before in a big game, and uh, those girls played well, I, and I would expect them to. I mean, I, I thought they played really well. I'm um, Caitlin Lonergan in the first half. It looked like she had was actually one of your better scorers and rebounders. Can you just tell me about her first half and that obviously coming back mm -hmm. here, did she kind of handle it pretty well? Yeah, I think it's been nothing, everything with Caitlin and, and the Lady Grizz, it's been a positive thing for us. She's been a great addition to our team. And um, I know she was nervous coming back here and I just told her go out there and have some fun and enjoy the experience. And I thought she did really well. I was happy to see her knock down some shots and get some tough boards. And she's got a bright future ahead of her. She's very raw offensively and, and basketball wise in general, but uh, she's been doing great for us. We're happy to have her. Sophia Styles also seemed to get going for a stretch as well. How impressive was her performance today given, you know, trying to call you guys back out of the hole there? Really yeah, I, I love the way the girl competes. I mean, she just, she flat out competes every moment she's on the floor. Uh, nothing flashy, no big ups, no big downs. She's just level headed and she gets after it. And I, I I love having her on the floor. She's one of those kids that gives you all she's got all the time, and and uh, you know she can get out and transition and do some things. I would we would like to get a little bit more transition. We didn't get much till late in the game. Um, part of that being we weren't boarding as well. Uh, so that's that's an area of our game that you know first half we didn't really. I don't think we got a transition bucket first half. But Sophie had a had a very good first Bobcat Grizz game. You mentioned earlier this week uh, just treating this kind of as one game amongst 18, so how important is that now with the upcoming road trip? Well, uh, you know, and I found out Northern Colorado and Weber both got beat today too. Well, so, I mean, it's just this league is tough. It is top to bottom. It's going to be uh, interesting at the end who ends up coming out on top because I truly believe everybody's capable of knocking everybody off right now. Uh, there's a lot of good teams. so. Pulling all these out at home and protecting your home court and then hopefully grabbing a few on the road is, is going to be very important for whoever ends up winning this thing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Two players and then we'll get Trish out. Uh, well, my opening state it's all about the rebounding. Uh, we challenged the team this week. Uh, they had their hands full all week trying to box out our scout guys who uh, just do a great job and uh, I thought it carried over today and uh, you know uh, the defensive glass I knew it was going to be challenging in itself but to get the offensive rebounding production was uh, really over the top and uh, I thought that was the difference getting us out of the gate and converting on some of those opportunities. Rebecca they, they rebound the ball so well so how are you guys able to win that battle today? We did a lot of rebounding Joe's throughout practice this week and I think that really helped us. The coaches got on us a lot and I think we produced the game. Rebecca, you, you personally uh, pulled down five offensive rebounds 
Uh, how do you account for that? What did you What did you do well to kind of produce a good rebounding number for yourself, ten tool? Well, that's the first I've heard of that. I didn't know that I even had that name. But. <laughs> Uh, the coaches get on me a lot for crashing. I mean, the whole team does, so... Just as long as I keep crashing, I guess I'm gonna get some, so <laughs> that's just what happened. Coach, she, she actually had a really big one here. Um, uh, just Sac State. Week. Yeah, Sac yep. State, where that really turned the tide and gave you guys some momentum. So is her offensive rebounds kind of becoming really important for this team when she gets them? I, w I would say, like, Delaney was kind of the first kid that really was somebody super solid, and then you started battling, um, really producing. But I thought the key for us on kind of the stretch that we've taken off has been Beck and Ole, even on the defensive glass, and helping some transition tempo and uh, uh, with Hannah. And um, just those two have always been a key for us. So when they're rebounding well, a lot of great things are happening. So it's not really, a lot of people talk about your post play rebounding, but for us, we, we definitely rely on, on our guard play. Hannah, what did you think of just the offensive execution overall for you, your team today? Yeah, I mean, I thought we stressed, um, like doing really well in motion, staying spaced, moving off of each other. Um, there were a few times we became a little stagnant. Um, I think it was just a fast paced game. Maybe we got a little tired, um, but I think overall we did a really good job moving up. We shot the ball really well. Um, our post did an awesome job posting up today, and they fought through some fouls. Um, so proud of them. But yeah, I thought overall our offense was pretty good. When they started switching on the screens instead of going underneath, how does that change what you guys do, and how do you think you guys adjusted? Yeah, I mean, they kind of did it a few times throughout the game, so I can't pinpoint a certain time where they um, switched and stayed in a new um, defense. But um, it definitely, we looked to the riser more. So coming off the screen, instead of hitting the post um, right away from the ball handler, we'd have to go through the riser to look in, kind of like a swivel pass, so they can duck the post duck in more. Um, skips were more open too, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a challenge for the first time we did it, and then I think we did a good job figuring it out. And only six total turnovers as a team. Talk about that aspect. I think I you know, I didn't even tell you guys that, 18 to 6. <laughs> Yeah, that was the ratio. No <laughs> awesome. And yes. you were six to zero. Yeah. yeah. So what went in, into that? I, I think it's just like a rivalry game. It's a big game. You know, everyone just wants to take care of the ball at every possession. Every possession counts. And that's the same with every game, you know. But I think especially in this one, everyone was just really focused on playing well and playing sound. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we just moved the ball really well. And then we passed the ball pretty well, too. So I think. Turnovers and mistakes just didn't pop up as much as they have in the past. Uh, Hannah, you mentioned the rivalry. It was 4,017 people, and they got the fire going mm -hmm. for player and shows. Just, can you tell me about the environment? Just as a player, and this game has always been kind of growing and growing and growing the past couple of years. How it's just you guys have had some nice results here. Just tell me about the environment. What was that like playing today? Oh, it's awesome. And this is my last one at home, so it meant a lot to me having all those fans there. And our fans are the best, too. They're the loudest. They yell at the refs sometimes, good and bad ways, you know, um, they keep us on our toes. So um, it was awesome. And like coming from out of state, you never really, like I never heard about the rivalry and I was like, oh, like what's the big deal? Um, and then when you get here, you're like, oh, okay, this is it. With football, basketball, you know, every sport. Um, and so to have it keep growing and growing and growing, and like you said, we got the fire out, which added to the environment. Um, and the fans did an amazing job cheering us on. So it was awesome. I loved it. Well, for you, Rebecca, uh, you know, Hannah came from out of state, but you're, you know, from overseas. So how did you kind of grow into this rivalry? Well, I mostly grew into it because I roomed with Peyton Ferris. Okay. Well, she played here. <laughs> that would do it. Yeah. Yes. And she is the biggest, like, person in this rivalry. Like, she, she really gets into it. And, yeah. You know, it's even when we're home, we're getting into it. So she really introduced me, and yeah. <laughs> kind of have to. Yeah, yeah I was gonna be in so I quote that chuckle, but right. <laughs> Coach, continuing off of some of the offense that you guys are doing, but the motion was good. But did you call a couple sets in, in there a little bit when, when all of a sudden the motion things are you guys are scoring? I think in that second half, did you call a couple sets amidst the motion a little bit in this game? Uh, I think we ca called a couple sets just a little bit throughout. Um, not a ton. I told Hannah going in, I wasn't going to over over call. Um, just especially like you can overthink this game, and I want them to just play. Uh, but we, we mixed in probably a, maybe three each yeah. quarter, three or four. 
Um, and, but most of that, those quick hits are action, just different um, action into our motion. So it's still motion, it's just a different look initially. Yeah, was this more of the one more complete offensive games that you've had maybe this whole season? Just well, especially balance-wise, when you look at the production across the board, I, I thought um, even though uh, Laura didn't come in that second half, she had to play a, a stretch there with her post-foul trouble, and for her to do what she did, you know, those things also matter. You know, that could be a momentum swing in the Grizz' favor that last, you know, a few minutes of, of that second quarter, and I thought she she produced really well. Um, but when you look at four kids being in double-digit scoring, you have multiple kids in double digits for rebounds. I just think that's the steadiness um, of when this team starts clicking is when you get that chemistry across the board. What did you think of the performance of your seniors just overall? Well, I said that was the first thing I said in the locker room um, was actually to the underclassmen, you know, about it, it's hard to play in these atmosphere in, in this atmosphere and get your feet wet and get settled and, you know, uh, for us to get out of the gate like we did, I just I said that was the seniors being seniors and really stepping up. I thought we just got out to a great start, really consistent. Um, even from the beginning, and even though it was 14-14 after the first quarter, uh, the guards were super aggressive. We missed, you know, three or four layups in that first quarter, but the mentality was there, and we just kind of built built off of that. Um, it was for sure the seniors um, rising to that occasion. Is Laura, can you give us an update on Laura? Uh, yeah, with her foot, and uh, hopefully we'll get her back next week. So game time decision at halftime. Rebecca, how happy are you? Because you, you've grown in this rivalry. Double double for you, first one in the career. Too, so. Yeah. I mean, what, do you take pride in beating the Grizz now out from Australia? What, what does this mean to you? Yeah, so I take a lot of pride in beating the Grizz now, and I hope that we can do the same thing you know, toward the end of the season when we play them at them. All right.